up wedding nerdigans this is the one and only packer girl 89 and today's book nerdigan discussion is hush hush by becca fitzpatrick and if you have not read hush hush which is the first book in the hush hush series then go read it and then come back and then we can talk about it and yes this is part of the hashtag angel readathon and here's the cover and it is pretty and awesome and lots of feathers and all that crap and Becca Fit Becca, I am so sorry it took so long to do this. I have been busy with school and all that crap. Uh, yeah, school and podcasts are killing me right now. So let's get to it. So the prologue is the prologues in the series are really cool. Like the prologue in this one, um, it, it takes place in France in November fifteen, uh, November uh, fifteen sixty five. And what happens is a fallen angel forces um, our main villain, Chauncey, to swear an oath of fealty. Uh, and also what happens is, and this is what happens in this series, is um, you have to meet, uh, basically, the, Nephil, the Nephils have to meet with the fallen at the start of the Hebrew month of Sheshvan. And I love that the Hebrew, uh, Hebrew is included here because I'm a Jew. Yes, I am. And basically, during the two weeks between the new and the full moons, um, they, the Nephil get possessed. This is the only time that this really happens. And what the Fallen uh, says about Chauncey being a Nephil is that, this is what he says, you belong to a biblical race of Nephilim, and you, um, your real father was an angel who fell from heaven. You're half mortal. And now we're going to get to the real story here. <laughs> now to modern times. So, um... This a good chunk of this story is very contemporary and it kind of annoys the hell out of me to be quite honest and it's very slow paced and I got to say that patch is really sexy and it kind of he kind of reminds me of um a little bit of Rafi in the um Pemberton in the End of Days series but like our first uh encounter with the supernatural I should say is when um, Nora is heading back from the library and this is after uh, dropping her best friend V off and basically um, and she's driving V's car because she doesn't have a car yet and a mysterious stranger who we find out who, who who it is later basically destroys her car and then when she's driving back to V's she's driving to V's and V takes a look at it at you know outside and it's brand new it's really crazy. It's like a huge mind fuck. I would be freaking the fuck out. And then they go, go then later on they go um break into the uh school records room and iron and um Nora has a uh iron deficiency, um basically anemia. So V's plan is that um Nora's going to register her iron pills with the nur with the school nurse and then um in reality she's going to go sneak into the uh school records office and look at Patch's records, which he has nothing in there, which I think is hilarious. Um, and, and I love, and I love how Patch, Patch is so funny. Patch is uh, bringing it all back, like, and there's, because basically they're in um, biology and they're trying, and it's kind of like a mean girl situation because they have a coach teaching sex ed. And I love how Patch brings, like, the how to find a mate the situation he brings it all back to Nora and I think it's really funny and it's really cute and um and I thought it was cool that Patch actually used Mindspeak to help Nora hit the softball even after Elliot who Elliot is I don't know Elliot is really creepy Elliot gets really up and personal I wouldn't mind that because Elliot is cute but he ends up being really freaky <laughs> um and then there's the archangel which is it's very you gotta think when you're reading this at first it's like this is kind of a coincidence that there is an, a roller coaster at an amusement park called the archangel and basically what happens is uh patch ends up mind fucking nora again and um and nora ditches v and elliot and jules jules is Oh, Jules is an ass. But anyway, she did. She ditches them at the arcade and hangs out with Patch and goes on the uh, Archangel and like she gets mind tricked to like where she um where like Nora's like uh, Nora has this feeling 
or Nora thinks I should say, she's like falling out of the roller coaster. I would be in th- her seatbelt busted. I would be flipping the fuck out if that was me. And um. Yeah, basically in the middle of the ride, she felt her seatbelt come undone and felt as if she was going to fly out of the car. And yeah, she was screaming. I would have been screaming my ass off. And yeah, and if Nora could basically, they had a bet, if Nora could ride the Archangel with Patch without screaming the whole time, then Patch will persuade Coach, the coach, to switch seats. Because yeah, she just didn't want to sit next to him anymore. And then basically Patch tells her about the Archangel. And it, you know, obviously means that if for those nerdkins that have been paying attention to the hashtag Angel Readathon in hell, if you guys have been reading, following me on Twitter and reading the same books as I have, and following the hashtag Angel Readathon, you guys, you nerdkins know that an archangel means a high-ranking, a high-ranking angel. Hell, archangels are, with the exception of the Embrace series, uh, where that is the soul that the archangel is usually the highest ranking angel and i love how pat patches like the higher up the um the harder the fall and she and then uh patch mind fu- mind tricks or mind fucks i should say um nora to believing that v ditched her so that patch could take her home on his motorcycle and okay who would, like, I'm scared as shit of motorcycles. I've never been one. I don't want to go on one. But, like, man, who would it, I'm sorry. Patch is really hot, and I would, I would just try and do it for him. I probably would be screaming my ass off and squeezing the living daylights out of him. And I love that he, he took her home and started teaching her how to make tacos. I was like, oh, I was like thinking, oh, that's so sweet. Like, who wouldn't like that? And, and I'm just not, I don't blame Nora for wanting to kiss Patch too. And, okay, don't give me shit. He's an arc, he's an archangel, and he's way older than me, so I can, I can crush on him if I want to. So, mm. <laughs> anyway. And then, um, this is what, and then they go to Victoria's Secret, uh, V and, uh, not, not Patch. V and Nora go to Victoria's Secret, and V, like, made me feel really bad because she's trying to flatten her D cups. And she, V is voluptuous, well, voluptuous, as they like to call her, big bone, but she's kind of fat. Yeah, she's she's fat. Let, I'm going to say it. I'm not going to be politically correct. If you have a problem with me being politi- politically, not being politically correct, deal with it. Um, but she says she wants to flatten out her D cups. And it's like, and I was thinking to myself, I have double Ds. No, I feel bad. And yes, people, uh, I get 32 double Ds at Victoria's Secret, and I am proud of them, and I would not fucking flatten them. And yes, they're natural. They're not fucking fake. And, but yeah, when I was 16, I had Ds too. Nah, that's no lie. I'm gonna say that. But I like the way V thinks. V is so freaking sneaky. I love some of her plans. So what she did at Victoria's Secret, and I kind of want to try this. I don't know if anyone else has tried this. And maybe it's just V's in her chew. But what she did was she took um, the Clarence stickers off and put them on the good bras. And I seriously want to try that. If any of you nerdigans, the female nerdigans, have tried that and it's worked, please tell me. And then... Basically, after that, like, Nora's, um, stalker robbed and attacked V because what happened was V disguised herself as Nora by wearing her jacket, and it resulted in a broken arm so bad that V had to get surgery to put the bone back in place. And and V was loving the drugs, too. The pain drugs. And Nora reminded, this book reminded me, via Nora, why I don't trust therapy. So I prefer not to rehash the past because I really, really don't want to relive it. So I understand where Nora's coming from because this is when she was in therapy with um, Ms. Green. Miss Green, And seriously, something got fishy with Miss Green right away because A, she knows about Patch, um, uh, about the uh, Nora tutoring Patch. And um, B... She set the conditions for Nora to tutor Patch only on campus with the faculty supervisor. 
That's got to be suspicious. And then um, Nora found that Elliot was part of a murder investigation at his old high school and then sneaks, and then he sneaks up on Nora. Uh, this is when she was at the library because she has dial-up. Yeah, she has dial-up, and she's in the middle of fucking nowhere. Okay, my parents live in the middle of, my mom lives in the middle of fucking nowhere, and she has satellite internet. Yeah, it's not the best, but it's not fucking dial-up. Anyway. This isn't 1995, people. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, and then Elliot basically sneaks up on Nora while she's looking at the article about the investigation, and after shaking him off, he just disappears. Okay, here's the final diagnosis for V, because she got her ass kicked. She had a busted arm, a concussion, um, a sorted... Uh, cuts and assorted cuts of scrapes and bruises, and of course the police haven't found any leads at all. So, seriously, V, you're right, high heel. Uh, she's right, cause v, so like they they went to go um try and investigate Patch uh at his restaurant at the restaurant he works at at the borderline, and V had like had these um stripper shoes. And she was like, high heels stop at four inches. I'm like, yeah, they stop at four inches because anything above a four inch heel is a stripper heel. And the female nerdigans know this, that anything above, or you should know this if you don't, that anything above a four inch heel is a stripper heel. It just is. And oddly enough, according to um, Elliot, apparently Jules, who's a creep, still attends uh, the same school that he transferred from, and his parents are always gone. Apparently, they are in the Australian diamond business. And, oh my god, V's plan was so fucking stupid. So, she so she had Nora wear a platinum blonde wig, a purple push-up bra, a black tube top, a sequin miniskirt, pink hot, hot pink fishnet tights, and a size 8.5 uh, shark skin stiletto heels. And she basically looked like a hooker. I swear to God, she looked like a hooker. And she, to get info on Patch from his co-workers at the borderline. Okay, if anyone else doesn't think that shark skin, um, okay, where is it? Uh, shark skin stiletto heels doesn't scream hooker, you're fucking crazy. So this is what we learned from the bartender. No, Patch is not a felon. Apparently he's working tonight when he isn't supposed to be, be scheduled. And then he got, and then right after this, Patch busted uh, Nora in the girls' bathroom. And I love that Patch is at least straightforward. He said, and he tells Nora, "There's no felonies and no restraining orders." And oh my God, I I, I have to mention this because I thought this was so funny. And um. And I'm, you know, you guys know that I'm a super comic fantasy guru, and I, I'm a football fan, so I have to mention this. So, basically, whenever the Patriots lost Nora's father, who basically died right before the events of this book, so he basically went to the garage and revved up his chainsaw, and once about two autumns previously, he hauled the chainsaw to the woods behind their property, chopped down ten trees, and diced them into firewood, and they still have more than half the pile to go through. I think that's hilarious. So basically, whenever the Patriots lost, he went. His, her father went and got, chopped up firewood. I guess that's productive. Um, let's see. Oh, so after um, this is later on. So after Nora's mother left to go make uh, copies of some unfinished paperwork for her boss Hugo, uh, so Nora, uh, Nora walked into her room and it was completely destroyed. And yeah, her room was destroyed, and she was getting mind fucked again. So dressers were yanked out, clothes strewn against the floor, the bed was ripped apart, the closets were doors were open, hanging is skewed by their hinges, and books and picture frames littered the floor. God damn it, poor books. Um, where is it? And uh, this is what Nora described. She said, I saw the reflection of movement uh, in the window across the room and swung around. And he stood against the wall behind me, dressed head to toe in black and wearing the ski mask. And of course, um... Nora does the smart thing and calls 911, and then we meet a character that is seen throughout this series, Detective Basso, and Detective uh, Hal Stigic. But we don't. But I'm probably gonna end up ranting about it a little bit later about um, Hal Stigic because we don't see him that much, and I wish we did. And I'll probably mention a little bit more why in finale. But yeah. 
Um, and by the time they checked uh, Nora's room, everything was back to the way it was, except for one thing, the article about Elliot. That was gone. And then finally... I was so happy when Nora accepted the date from Patch, and yes, it's creepy and romantic at the same time he was in the same library. And then, yeah, Karma is a fucking bitch, because Marcy, who is a complete bitch, uh, was verbally bullying um, Nora in the library, and it led to Marcy, um, wait, and it leads to Nora getting a visit from uh, Detective Basso and his partner again, informing Nora that Marcy was viciously beaten. I was like thinking, yeah, that's kind of car, that's karma. I'm sorry, it's just fucking karma. And then, um, okay, Patch, what, what, after the, the detective left, Patch came in his Jeep command, and a Jeep commander, and apparently he won it in a game of pool. Okay, seriously, I need to start playing pool if I could win Jeep commanders, or and other shit in pool. And then we meet Rickson, um, who uh, was brawling with um, with Nora at Bose when Patch's shirt goes up and we see the wing scars. Yeah, something we don't really see. I think we saw it in uh, Pemmerin in the End of Days, which was the wing scars, but we didn't get to see... Um, wait a minute, did we get to see the full effects of it like we did in this book? Yes, we did. We saw the... We saw the effect, similar effects to the wing scars in Pemmerin in the End of Days that we do in this book. Similar, but um, we didn't have to use an angel sword. So, just kind of mention that. Um, and, Rick, and then Rickson mentions how Patch got his nickname. So, this is what Rickson said. Before our good friend Patch here got mixed up in, in pool, the lad favored Irish bare knuckle boxing, wasn't very good at it, and truth be told, uh, he was downright uh, pathetic. I spent most nights patching him up, and soon after, everyone started calling him Patch, and told him to give up boxing, and he wouldn't listen. And then, this is what Nora said about the angel scars. And between, uh, between, uh, the painting... From uh, arc, from, you know, from the Archangel roller coaster of the angel scars, wing scars, and patches, and both scars that healed to the color of black licorice, and both ran from the shoulder blades to the kidneys, and both curved out as they traveled the length of the back. Um, and this is what she found on Fallen Angels, and I th this is I thought this was interesting. So here, the frightening truth: at the creation of Garden of uh, the Garden of Eden, Eden, heavenly angels were dispatched to Earth to watch over Adam and Eve. Soon, however, some angels set their sights on the world beyond their garden walls. They saw themselves as future rulers over the earth population, lusting after power, money, and even human women. That sounds very consistent, and it sounds it, kind, it definitely sounds like the exiles for sure. Um, together, they uh, tempted and convinced Eve to eat the forbidden fruit, opening, um, opening the gates uh, guarding Eden. And as punishment for this grave, this is, I don't remember, no, it was usually mentioned, I think in the, I think in the, I'm trying to remember which book it was. Oh, it was in the Embraciers. I think it was, was it Lilith that did it? No, it wasn't Lilith that did it. I'm trying to remember who it was that did it in the Embrace series, because I know it was mentioned before. God damn it, I can't remember. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. Oh, and God stripped the angels' uh, wings and banished them to earth forever. So, fallen angels are the same evil spirits or demons described in the Bible as taking possession of human bodies. So, so this is a little bit different than um, how how we've seen it in um, the hashtag Angel Readathon. Because usually, what happens is the angels fell. Because of, um, especially in Christianity, uh, because they betrayed God to go uh, side with Lucifer because they were tricked um, to, uh, to go with Lucifer. And usually it had something to do with free will uh, because they wanted free will. This, I think, is more consistent with, um, with Judaism, with Judaism's version. But I'm not complete. I would have to double check, and I will get back to you guys on that. Let's see. Um, oh, here it is. Fallen angels roam the earth looking for human bodies to harass and control. They tempt humans to do evil, communicating thoughts and images direct to directly to their mind. Doesn't that sound like?
like Sweet Evil, the Sweet Evil series? It sounds like the, um, oh my god, what's the, what, it sounds like the Dukes, for sure. But I'm trying to think of the other one, the other thing it sounds like. Oh my god. It sounds like the Legionnaires. There we go. It sounds like the Legionnaires and the Whisperers. Um, if a fallen angel succeeds in turning a human toward evil, it can enter the human bod the human's body and influence his or her personality. A little bit different than sweet evil, but that's kind of cool, actually. I kind of wish it was like that in uh, Sweet Evil. That would be really interesting if, in the Sweet Evil series, if um, the demon, if the, or sorry, if the Legionnaires overpowered the Guardian Angel, that that, the Legionnaire took possession over the Guardian, um, kicked the Guardian Angel out and took possession of it. That would be interesting. But that doesn't happen. However, the possession of a human body by a fallen angel can only can take place only during the Hebrew month of Sheshvan. A Sheshvan, known as the bitter month, is the only month without any Jewish holidays or fasts, making it an unholy month. And between new and fall, um, full moons during Sheshvan, fallen angels invade human bodies in droves. Fallen angels who have sexual relationship um, ships with a human produce superhuman offspring called Nephilim, which is very consistent. The Nephilim race is an evil, okay, Nephilim race is not evil. Well, most of them aren't evil. Um, let's see. Ah, fucking A. Is, a, is um, an evil and unnatural race that was never meant to inhabit the earth. Although many believe the great flood at the time of Noah was intended to cleanse the earth of Nephilim, we have no way of knowing if this hybrid race died out and whether or not fallen angels have continued to reproduce with humans since that time. It seems logical that they would, which means the Nephilim race is likely on the earth today. Okay. Nephilim are not, not all Nephilim are evil, okay? Not all Nephilim are good. There's got to be a gray area for the Nephilim, just like there were in Sweet Evil, okay? Seriously. Okay, and then we have, El then, like, afterwards, Elliot comes over to Norris at the crack of dawn, and he he's drunk as a motherfucker, and says, um, is basically saying, go camping with him and Jules and be over Spring Break or else, and yeah, and he slammed her against um his, uh, against her house. Yeah, it was fucked up. And then like Via is freaking defending him on top of that. I was like, what the fuck, V? Seriously? Oh my god. And then um Nora goes sleuthing at um at this restaurant called Blind Joe's in Portland to find out about the girl that was murdered. And Whitney, uh, the waitress, um, tells her on the condition, uh, tells her everything on the condition of ordering a milkshake, Angus burger, and chowder, and a 25% tip. Um, that Kirsten hooked up with uh, that kid, Elliot Sanders, the one in the papers. He was in here all the time. Walked her back to her apartment at the end of her shift. And if you're asking if I think Elliot could have put the note in her apartment, sure I do. Rich kid like that could get away with anything. Probably hired somebody to plant the note. That's how it works when you got money. Scholarship? What's in the water you've been drinking? If Elliot um, don't got big time money, how do you buy uh, Kirsten her apartment? Tell me that. Kirsten never shut up about it. it um, about drove me insane. And then she said, this is what she said about Jules. She said, yeah, I remember that guy. Hard, n hard not to. All moody and quiet. He came in once or twice. Wasn't that long ago, maybe around the time Kirsten died. I remember because we were serving corned beef sandwiches for St. Patrick's Day, and I couldn't get him to order one. Just glared at me like he would have reached across the table and slit my throat if I'd stuck around reading the daily specials any longer. But I think I remember something. It's not like I'm nosy, but I do got ears. Sometimes I can't help hearing things. And last time the tall um, guy and Elliot came in, they were hunched over a table talking about a test. And the, the tall guy came in first, asked if Kirsten was working, and I told him no, she wasn't, and he got on his cell phone. Ten minutes later, Elliot strolls in, and Kirsten always hand, uh, handled Elliot's table, but like I said, she wasn't working, so I got it. If they talked about Kirsten, I didn't hear, but it looked uh, to me like the, uh, the tall guy didn't want Kirsten around. And then after pie, raspberry, lemonade, and after dinner coffee and a 20% tip later, Nora's on her way home when, of course, B texts her 
saying she's in a crap part of the neighborhood at a party with Elliot. Like, seriously, V, what are you thinking? I was, like, thinking if I were Dora, I would have bitch slapped her. Seriously, what were you thinking? Why would you go to a crap part of town? Seriously. So, literally less than a minute after Nora gave an old bag lady her coat and hat, the old lady was shot dead, and then Kami, um, she called Patch, and then Kami Patch picked her up right away, and when Patch showed up, the old bag lady vanished, and, and dang it, he was gonna, he was like, he was about to win a condo, seriously, how do you win this shit at pool, and I need to know this, has anyone else done this before, seriously, I have to know, um, and then now V's going home, and it's all because Elliot couldn't find what he look, was looking for. And, of course, Patch's car breaks down in the middle of a goddamn storm and uh, comes in, and they have to spend the night in a seedy motel. But on the bright side, at least it's a king-size bed, and she's alone with Patch. And then Nora touched the wing scar, and she got sucked into one of Patch's memories that included Miss Green, who we find out is Debria. And this is where I'm going to get to do a little bit of a comparison here. So, basically, as I mentioned earlier, in Penryn of the End of Days, when, um, when she hit, when, uh, Penryn hit, uh, Belial's wing scars with, um, uh, with Rafi's sword, or Pookie Bear, <laughs> Pookie Bear, when she hit him with Pookie, with the, uh, Belial's, uh, wing scars with Pookie Bear, that's when they were sent into his memory. But, um... This, it's different here because it's only, it only takes a touch of the wing scars. So basically, let, let's get to the memory here. And this is at Bo's, by the way. So what Debria says is, I know how you can get your wings back. As soon as you get your wings back, you can come home. There is no catch. You have to save a human life. Very judicious, considering the crime that banished you here in the first place. You'll be a guardian. Listen to me, Patch. There's nothing better. Actually, there, there is. It's called being an archangel. Yeah, guardians are like the lowest ranking of the angel of the angel hierarchy. Being an archangel is the highest of the angel hierarchy. Uh, let's see. Uh, you're kidding yourself. Any other fallen angel would jump at the ch uh, chance to get their wings back and become a guardian. Why can't you? And, see, and then she kisses Patch, and I'm like thinking, Nora probably wants to punch her in the face. And then Debria goes on, um, I should go. I've already stayed too long. I promised Luciana I'd hurry. I, um, I miss you. Save one human life, and you'll have your wings again. Come home. I have to go. None of the others can find out I've been down here. I love you. And then Patch is like, Patch wasn't buying, he wasn't buying this shit at all. He said, now tell me why you're really here. You're lying. Tell me the truth right now. I was like, that's my man. That's Patch. He doesn't, he doesn't buy the bullshit. And then Debria says, fine, I know what you're planning to do. I know you've heard rumors about the Book of Enosh. Book of Enosh is going to come up again in um, the Fallen series by uh, Thomas E. Sinigowski. Book of Enosh is going to come up again. I also think you could do the same thing, but you can't. So, Debria was sent to stop Patch from seeking out the Book of Anosh. That was the whole purpose. So, what Patch was saying tell, um, to her was, uh, tell them we talked and I showed interest in becoming a guardian. Tell them I asked for a name. If I'm going to save a human life, I need to know who's at the top of your departing list. I know you're privy to that information as an angel of death. Yes, Debria is an angel of death, a.k.a. a grim reaper. And then Debria says this, that information is sacred and private and not predictable. The events in this world shift from uh, moment to moment depending on the choice. And then she sees Nora. Yeah, Nora Gray. Someone wants to kill her. Wait, I see her. There's a shadow behind her. It's him. He's following her. She doesn't uh, see him, but he's right there. Why doesn't she see him? Why isn't she running? I, can, I can't see his face. It's in shadow. And it turns out it's Patch that's supposed to kill her. It's like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Patch is supposed to kill Nora? Oh, my God. And, yeah, Patch, uh, Debria is Patch's ex. And, yeah, Patch was basically enrolled in Nora's sc uh, school to kill her. But, yes, we got a kiss. It's dead of, the, of him killing her. Yay. I was so happy with that. And so Patch explains uh, his power. So, what he does is, um, 
This is what he says. I put the words and images there, but it's up to you if you believe them. It's a riddle. The images overlap reality, and you have to figure out which is real. It's a fallen angel power. Any other kind of angel wouldn't invade your privacy, even though they can. Um, I put a thought in Coach's mind to redo the seating chart because I needed to get close to you. I made you think you fell off the Archangel because I wanted to kill you, but I couldn't go through with it. I almost did, but I stopped. I settled for... You bastard! Oh, man! If I was not, I would have slapped him right then and there! Um, I settled for scaring you instead. Then I made you think your cell was dead because I wanted to give you a ride home. And when I came inside your house, I picked up a knife. I was going to kill you then. Then, um, uh, you... Wait, kill you then, you changed my mind. I would have punched him or bitch slap Patch. I swear to God, Commune Arceus. Dardigans, please, I want to know if you would have bitch slap Patch if he said that shit. So basically, Nora decides to trust, uh, said she will trust Patch if she touches his wing scars again. Which he can't control the memories he can allow her to see. So basically, she goes into the memory containing Rickson and Patch on the first night of Sheshvan to meet their vessels, Chauncey, um, Lingias, and Barnabas. And this is what Rickson says. You're a fallen angel. You can't feel a thing. Until tonight, that is. The next two weeks are Chauncey's gift to you. Give, a, give an unwilling mind, you. So... That's interesting, because remember, throughout this whole hashtag re angel readathon, a lot of the angels have been fallen angels. So you have to wonder, can these, can any of the other fallen angels feel anything? Like, feel a, a sense of touch, or anything like that? I'm curious what you nerdigans think about that. Put that in the comment section um, to let me know. I'm curious what you nerdigans think. Um, and then Patch says, uh, where are you? Oh, this is what Patch says on the Book of Anosh. I was told there's a story in the Book of Anosh about a fallen angel who becomes human. And we'll learn more about that in the Fallen series. You will. And Rickson says, um, says this, You best be happy with uh, two weeks in a Nepal's body. Half human is better than nothing. And Chauncey can't undo what's been done. He swore an oath and has to uh, live up to it. Yeah, once you swear an oath, you can't break it until you die. And then Rickson says this, says this, Nephilim can't die. And have you thought about this? If you could kill him, you couldn't possess them. And this is af after the memory. Um, what Patch says on his, on his body is that my body is like glass, real but outward, reflecting the world around me. You see and hear me and I see and hear you. When, uh, when you touch me, you feel it. I don't experience you in the same way. I can't feel you. I experience everything through a sheet of glass. And the only way I can cut through that sheet is by possessing a human body. And Chauncey is a cross between a fallen angel who wants to feel human sensation, um, who wants to feel uh, human sensations can do it in, um, in a Nephil's body. Yeah. And because I feel it in here, in my heart, I haven't lost the ability to feel emotion. Let me put it this way. Our emotional connect connection isn't lacking. And this is why Patch fell. And I, it's, oh, I, I, my heart breaks for Patch. It really does. Hold on, I gotta see my time. Oh, my timing's not that bad. Okay, I, my heart breaks for Patch here. So, I thought if I fell, I'd become human. The angels who tempted Eve had been banished to the earth, banished to earth, and there were rumors that they'd lost their wings and became, uh, became human. Yeah, and became human. When they left heaven, uh, it wasn't this big ceremony we were all invited to. It was private. I didn't know their, ring, their wings were ripped out or that they were cursed to roam earth with a, a, a hunger to possess human bodies. Back then, nobody had even heard of fallen angels. So it made sense in my mind that if I fell, I'd lose my wings and become human. At a time, um, I was crazy about a human girl and it seemed uh, worth the risk. And then, oh God, me. We see Debria, and she, this is afterwards. Debria is in Nora's house. Yeah, and then she said this. I did follow you shopping. I attacked your friend and planted little hints in her mind, making her think Patch hurt her. It wasn't a far stretch. He's not exactly harmless to begin with. It was in my best interest to make you as frightened of him as possible. And he's planning to use you as, sac as a sacrifice. See that mark? And she thrust her finger at... Nora's wrist because she has a birthmark on here. It means you're a female dis uh, descent of a Nephil, and not just any Nephil, but Chauncey uh, Langeas, Patch's vessel. There's a sacred book, the Book of Anosh. In it, a fallen angel, if a fallen angel kills his vessel by vassal, I'm sorry, vassal by sacrificing one of the Nephil's female descent, 
female descendants. You don't think Patch, um, Patch wants to kill you? What's the one thing he wants most? Once he sacrifices you, he'll be human. He'll have everything he wants, and he doesn't, and he won't come home with me. And that's why I have to get rid of you. It appears that one way or another, my premonitions were right. Death is coming for you. And seriously, I have to ask this. What is with villains and revealing their plans? Honestly, it's like, it's like can't you just shut up and just do it? My God. Anyway, I'm, uh, then she says, I'm an angel of death. I carry souls to the afterlife. As soon as I finish, I'll carry your soul through the veil. And I have to ask, because I'm being a Potter nerd again right now. I wonder if it's the same veil um, that Sirius fell through in uh, um, Order of the Phoenix. And that has to be it. I'm curious what you uh, nerdigans think about that. Do you guys think it's the same veil that Sirius th fell through in the Department of Mysteries? I have to ask that. Uh, let's see. Um, and then she says, you have nothing to be afraid of. And then, thank God, Patch gets gets Nora out of there. And then Patch mentions um, the girl he fell for, too. And, you know, ugh, motherfucker. Uh, Debrina sets, of course, sets the house on fire to boot. And this is what Patch says on the girl he fell for. The first time I saw her, I was still an angel. It was an instant possessive lust. It drove me crazy. I didn't know anything about her, except that I would do whatever it took to get close to her. I watched her for a while, and then I got it in my head that if I went down to Earth and possessed a human body, I would be cast out of heaven and become human. The thing is, I didn't know about Sheshvan. I, I can. I came, um, I can't, oh, uh, wait. All right. I came down on a night in August, but I couldn't possess the body. Possess the body. On my way back to heaven, a host of avenging angels stopped me and ripped it, um, and, and ripped out of the sky. Right away, I knew something was wrong. When I looked at humans, all I could feel was um, insatiable craving to be inside their bodies. All my powers were stripped, and I was this weak, pathetic thing. I wasn't human. I was fallen. I realized I'd given it all up just like that. All this time, I've hated myself for it. I thought I'd given it up for nothing, but if I hadn't fallen, I wouldn't have met you. Oh, I'm so sweet. Oh. And then um, her Nephil heritage comes from her father's side, obviously. And Patch says this as well. I'm not going to kill you, Nora. I don't kill people who are important to me. And you are the top of the list. Oh, my God. It's so cute. I can't help it. It's adorable. Um, and then Patch, he tore Debria's wings off. Yes, so now Debria is a fallen. Uh, she wasn't going to keep her wings after flying to kill you. The moment she tried to get back into heaven, the avenging angels would have stripped them. She had it coming sooner or later. I just sped things up. They were deteriorating. The feathers were broken and thin. If she stayed on Earth much longer, it was a signal to every other fallen angel who saw her that she'd fallen. If I didn't do it, one of them would have. And then fucking Elliot ruined the moment. I was like, God damn it. And then, because he called her. And... He said, Sonora, come play with us. Otherwise, there's a tree in the common area of the school. Uh, of the school, Basically, V, Jules, and Elliot are playing hide-and-go-seek with the school with V's name on it. And motherfucker, someone slashed um, uh, Patch's tires and lucky, uh, luckily Brant, because uh, they were going on a date at the movie theater, uh, was at the movie, uh, was at the theater, and Patch had $300 to um, borrow his car. And in the school, uh, Nora came across a very dead Jules, or is he? And he's like, no, he's not fucking dead. And the Jules said this about Elliot. He said, if you're going to commit a crime, never leave evidence. Elliot's been an integral part of everything. He knows too much. I had to test Elliot's loyalty. I took away what was most important. El Elliot was a kinghorn on scholarship, and nobody let him forget it until me. I was his benefactor. In the end, it came down to choosing me or Kirsten. Most, um... Uh, wait. More sensibly, there we go. Choosing money or love. Apparently there's no pleasure in being a pauper among princes. I bought him off, and that's when I knew I could rely on him when I came, um, when it came to dealing with you. And yes, people, Jules is Chauncey! Bastard! And he said, did I mention I inherited a few traits from my father? Just like him, I'm a deceiver. I make you see lies, I make you hear voices. And I've been keeping an, a close eye on Patch for centuries. Last summer, he made his first trip to your house, though you didn't notice. He followed you shopping a few times. 
Every now and then he made a special trip out of his way to find you. And then he enrolled at your school. I couldn't help but ask myself, what was so special about you? I made an effort to find out. I've been watching you for a while now. I didn't want to draw Patch's suspicion and backed off. And that's when Elliot stepped forward. And it didn't take him long to tell me what I already guessed. Patch is in love with you. Well, this explains why Pat Jules and Patch were never in the same room. Um, and the plan was to kill you on the camping trip, but Elliot failed to convince you to come. Earlier today, I followed you out of uh, Blind Joe's and shot you. Imagine my surprise when I found out I found um, I killed a bag lady dressed in your coat. But it all worked out. Here we are. So, post-stabbing Chauncey in the leg with a scalpel. That was awesome, by the way. So, Nora found V in the easy lab alive. Oh. V explained that Jules chained all the doors, and yeah, V, just leave, Jules, uh, leave. Seriously, V, just fucking leave. Jules doesn't want you here. You're you're not part of this. Just go get the cops. Just, just leave. Um... So here's what happened with Chauncey. Uh, this is why uh, Chauncey had, um, wait, uh, Chauncey had attacking Marcy. So here we go. So Elliot told me there was, there was bad blood between the two of you. I didn't like um, the idea of someone else having the pleasure of tormenting my girl. And holy crap, Patch took over, so Patch took over Nora's mind and had her pu uh, punch Chauncey. That was so badass. You have to admit that was badass. And then, um, and now fucking Chauncey's doing it. And it's like, if they're doing it at the same time, it must give you, I wonder if it gives you like the biggest migraine. <laughs> Seriously. So the real question is, is can all true Neville do this or only a certain sect of Neville? Otherwise, otherwise the sweet, e seriously, I have to ask, because otherwise the sweet e evil Neville don't make any sense. And hell, they don't already, they already don't make any sense as it is. So I got to ask that question, the Nerdigans. Anyway, um, so Chauncey didn't even know that Nora was his descendant. Otherwise, you have to wonder, would Chauncey have tormented Nora or attempted to torment Nora as much as he did if he would have known that she was his descendant? And he, boy, was he shocked because they were in the gym and she was climbing the bars and she jumped and um, attempted suicide, basically. And he was shocked when she jumped. It was crazy. And then, um, and then she didn't freaking die course not so this is what patch in nora's room when you jumped the sacrifice killed jules and technically when you came back he should have too but since he didn't have a soul he had nothing to revive his body i didn't accept your sacrifice i turned it down what good is a body if i can't have you oh god that's so sweet and um because save uh patch saved nora he got his wings back and his scars are gone and you can't see my wings they're made of spiritual matter i'm your guardian angel Oh, and then here's the guardian angel job description. Guard your body. I take my job seriously, which means I'm going to need to get acquainted with the subject matter on a personal map level. Patch still can't feel Nora, but it doesn't mean I'm not blacklisted. And V did get to the police in time, and the paramedic saved Elliot. He's going to be okay. And while, of course, Basso and his partner are going to be taking uh, the statements and recommended installing uh, um, new alarm systems, and guess who's doing it? Yep, Patch is doing it. And I love this ending. I really do. Okay, so it ends like this. Talk, he shook his, um, Nora said talk, he shook his head. His eyes full of desire. Kiss, he whispered to my thoughts. It wasn't a question, but a warning. He grinned when I didn't protest and lowered his mouth to mine. The first touch was just that, a touch, a teasing, tempting softness. I licked my lips and Patch's grin deepened. More, he asked. Um, I curled my uh, hands into his hair, pulling him closer more. I like the ending a lot. It's so sweet. I'm sorry. I'm a hopeless romantic. Actually, I'm not sorry about that. But no, I want to know what you guys, Nerdigans, thought about this. This one, I know this book is a little bit more slow, a little bit slow paced for a first book, but whatever. It, when you get really get into the angel stuff in this one, it's it gets really good. And I love it. So, um, let me know what you guys thought of this uh, hush hush in the comment section below. Um, also remember to like, again comment, share, and subscribe to Nerdigans Inc. Also, if you love what I'm doing and 
wanting to get my ass more motivated to get these done on time because I'm behind by like seven videos. Yes, I'm behind by seven videos. Remember to donate to my Patreon and become a nerd again today. And also follow me on Twitter, which is in the description box below, as well as my uh, Patreon um, link. And I will see you guys in the next video, which will be Crescendo, which is book two of the Husha series. Until then, I will see you nerd again later. Bye!